right, guys. So this week I want to talk about something that is extremely important for filmmakers of all different skill sets, and that is color grading. And more specifically, I want to focus in this particular tutorial on my favorite plugin for DaVinci Resolve. It's how I color grade 90% of all of my footage. And this plugin is incredibly useful for filmmakers of all different skill sets, whether you're a very experienced colorist or someone who is just getting used to DaVinci Resolve. This plugin can really help you to achieve a beautiful soft film like type of look with relatively minimal experience. So let's jump right into DaVinci Resolve and get started here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull in all the different clips and we're going to go through and we're going to go ahead and pick a particular clip that is going to work well to really showcase the uh, capabilities of this plugin and give us a lot of dynamic range uh, to work with a number of different colors. And you can really see how powerful not only DaVinci Resolve is in working in the B-Raw codec, but this plugin specifically. So let's go ahead and scrub through here, pick a shot that we like. It's really gonna show off some of these colors. Okay, and once we get to the color grading section of DaVinci Resolve, the first thing that I always do is I go ahead to this camera raw section right here, and I just go ahead and ensure that the color science is Gen 5. I change the color space to Rec 709, make sure that I'm happy with my ISO, and I toggle on this highlight recovery uh, tab right here. And if you notice, looking right around in here, you get a lot of information back in your shot when you toggle on this section. So that's just a nice little feature. Um, they just make sure, I always make sure that's turned on. There's obviously some clips, it depends on the way that you shot it, depends on the exposure, that it really makes a minimal difference and it's not really noticeable, but I always ensure to make sure that's toggled on. So the first thing that I do is I add a corrector node. When you download this plugin, uh, Film Convert Nitrate, make sure that you have the latest, which is 3.04. Um, in your library, it's going to be down at the bottom on in the Film Emulation section. Uh, DaVinci Resolve automatically just categor categorizes it in that section for you, makes it super easy to find and work with. And I'm just going to click and drag right over my clip. Now you'll notice instantly it looks super grainy. It kind of has this sort of faded, flat image. Um, you come over here to the camera settings and you choose your camera profile. So for these shots, uh, I've filmed it on a Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and in Film Gen 5. All right, so right off the bat, you notice that there's been a huge change in the colors. This is something that looks significantly better. It's starting to look like an actual shot that we've color graded. Now, the nice thing about Film Convert Nitrate is if you look down here under these film settings, they offer a number of different film stock options that you can go through as sort of a baseline uh, for how you want to sort of formulate your shot. My favorite is the one that is it's every, every single time you go ahead and slap Film Convert Nitrate over top of your clip, um, it automatically goes to this Kodak 5207 uh, um, film stock. And that one is usually my favorite place to start for all of my shots before I go ahead and start uh, grading further. The next nice thing is it gives you this option for film size. You can do anything from Super 8, which is going to give you, you know, a really sort of old school, old film, super eight film type of look, which, you know, for certain projects, certain types of things, you might want that type of style, which is nice. Um, but for the BMPCC 6K, it is a super 35 camera. And I always find that the super 35 grain gives it enough of that sort of vintage feel while also not making it, you know, too much like I'm just trying to make my shots look like they were shot on film. So, from there, I usually mess with the grain strength. I pull it around 20 to 30, depending on my shots and what I think looks best. I'm liking the way that that grain looks right there. Okay, and the next thing I do 
is I start to ma uh, mess with my exposure, temperature, tint, and saturation. Now, for this particular film and these shots, I was looking for something that gave a really warm sort of summery type feel, even though this was shot in the wintertime. You know, with all of the different lights in Times Square, I was going for a very oversaturated, very sort of dreamlike, you know, midnight in Tokyo type of look. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that temp all the way up. Okay, and another nice thing is as soon as you pull on Film Convert onto your node, this section comes up right here where you have the option to do color wheels, film response, and grain curve. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this section is I go to my color wheels and I start to mess with my highlights. Now for this particular clip, I really want a sort of overexposed, you know, bright washed out look. That's the style that I'm going for. So I'm gonna just move those highlights down a little bit take the midtones just to and shadows just to add a little bit of contrast in the subject's face maybe pull those highlights up a little bit more to sort of account for that pull those down a bit and you just kind of play and massage it until you get somewhere you feel like you're comfortable with a good baseline i'm liking the way that's looking and then you have these color wheels here and you can mess with the colors and the highlights and sort of achieve the look that you're going for. You know, like I mentioned, I'm kind of trying to do something oversaturated, warm, you know, really kind of accentuate uh, the oranges, the reds, the pinks for this particular shot. So let's go ahead and work with this clip until we find something we're happy with. And you can just kind of work your way through all of that. That is looking super cool. I love how vibrant the oranges and reds are. There's a little bit of a section here where her face is really red because of the lights behind her. But that's a nice sort of section where it goes through and then it kind of fades out to a little bit more natural skin tones as the camera pans and the lights change behind her. So this clip is starting to look pretty good. I'm, a, I'm much more happy with that. The colors look, the grain is looking okay to me. But if you notice, there is these lines that are flickering across the screen. And that is incredibly jarring. And that was due to the 60 hertz flashing lights um, that were going on in Times Square that can cause these issues on the sensor due to the shutter Cameras that don't have global shutter will sometimes struggle with this type of lighting situations um, and they sort get this sort of strobe effect here and that's something that is essentially making our clip unusable. However, the nice thing about DaVinci Resolve, and this is not something that you'll have to do for every clip, obviously if you are not suffering from this problem, you can just work with this Film Convert uh, plugin and node and you can really achieve fantastic results. But for this particular clip, we're gonna go ahead and add another corrector node. And then we are going to find the D-Flicker plugin. And we're gonna slap that on. And you immediately notice it's removed a lot of what we were seeing. But let's go in here and in the D-Flicker settings, go from time-lapse to fluoro light, takes out even more. And you see, we're really starting to see a clip that is no longer affected by that strobe setting we were seeing before. And then if you go to this restore original detail after D flicker section, uh, you can choose how much of the detail is restored into the clip after the D flicker uh, plugin does its work. So that seems to be a bit too much. We're gonna go ahead and pull the detail down a bit. And there we go, that's something that's looking a lot nicer. You can still see a little bit in her hair and you can just kind of massage it. I feel like that's a word that I'm using, <laughs> using for all these different sliders. You can massage your sliders, um, but it just takes a lot of fine tuning. I mean, that's what color grading is all about. You know, it is, you know, there are obviously do's and don'ts and best practices for color grading, but a lot of it is what you think looks best and it's all personal preference. You can really just sort of mess with all these different um, plugins, these different sliders, these different effects, so you can achieve something that you're happy with. So this is starting to look pretty good. And the one last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down to 
temporal noise reduction put one frame and just pull the luma and chroma up a little bit and pull the luma and chroma and the spatial threshold up a little bit as well just to get a bit more of that flicker effect to disappear and look at that now we've got a usable clip I love the way these colors are looking, the bright oranges, the magentas, the reds. Um, it's something that looks really, really good. But the really cool thing about this plugin is, look how simple that was to achieve really, really incredible effects. Uh, you know, just adding Film Convert, being able to work with this plugin, you have very simple, easy to use sliders that make it, very understand that make it very easy to use for the average the beginner to average colorist uh, to achieve really great results and the nice thing is as you grow and as you become more experienced with color this plugin really sort of grows with you as well you do have a lot of flexibility and a lot of control you know you can make this just your beginning node to kind of slap on your initial LUT instead of using a third-party LUT or other LUTs that you created film convert nitrate can be your LUT that you essentially create for this individual clip slap that on one of your corrector nodes and then you can go ahead and still build out the rest of your node tree but this is just a great plugin to create a baseline grade and achieve really really nice cinematic results regardless of your experience level i hope this tutorial was helpful obviously in the coming months i'm going to be doing something a little bit more in depth really my whole workflow sort of starting with film convert as my base that I build the rest of my node off of. And after I release this film that these clips are from, I'll probably be doing another tutorial showing my entire node tree build out and my entire editing process for this film. So if you guys enjoyed this, found this helpful, drop a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We are doing huge things this year. Um, I'm really, really excited for all of the stuff coming up and I'm pumped for everyone who has already decided to be a part of this community and this journey. And for those of you who are just here for the first time and made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. Comment below and cheers guys. I'll see you next week.